cute puppy dresses. <laughs> I am sure that I, like many of you, have seen those cute puppy dresses on Pinterest. They've been pretty mainstream for a couple of years now. Selkie is definitely the most notable, recognizable name when you say like, oh, puppy sleeve dress, you think Selkie, right? Well, you know what I also think? I also think those cute witch outfits that people make with them, with the matching hats and everything. And in my opinion, there is one person whose pastel gothic, huff sleeve, selkie witch outfit reigns supreme. And that is Keiko Lin. And today, we will be shamelessly recreating this look. Listen, sometimes I get really creative and I can just do things and it comes out of my mind and it's awesome. And other times I just want to wear something that I already saw. And today is one of those days. And I am just now realizing that I'm making this video and talking as if I'm gonna start the project now. Oh no, the project is done. I'm looking at it right there. I could re-record this opening thingy, but I'm not going to. In this house we craft in pajamas, let's get to it. I was trying to decide what color I was gonna make this dress. I have some blue stuff, I have some green stuff, but as I was like going through my stash, of fabrics, one color really stood out the most. Um, I'm in my pink era. I have so many little things of pink like this. Why, why do I even have this? Like, I bought it because it was on sale. That's a me thing to do. But like, even down to the felt, I have this giant thing of pink felt. Like, look how much there is. So I think the decision has been made for us, even though I think I would like a green one or a blue one maybe a little bit better. I'm perfectly fine with a pink one, like let's be honest here. Who am I to fight against the wills of the fabric gods? I am but no one. What I'm going to do, I'm gonna figure out exactly what I have because everything is in pieces. Like some of these things I've used for other projects. Some of these things were purchased for specific reasons. Like I have these flowers. I think I was gonna make like a fairy crown out of these years ago and I'm gonna use them for this project now because I already have it. Oh, also freaking bias tape. When I tell you I have a problem and when I tell you I am dedicated to using the supplies that I have on hand to create things, I mean it. And then sometimes I still go and buy new things and that's how I end up here. It's bleak, but we're gonna make it work. We're gonna get through this. I am finally feeling really motivated and excited about making this dress. This is a dress that I've already made before. I even made it in pink last time. It's the one that has little stars or something on it. Knowing how it fits now, like that same dress and like understanding my body has changed since then, I'm gonna need to make it substantially longer because my butt hangs out in that dress and I am not gonna be this like, six foot tall pregnant lady walking around with her bum hanging out. Like that's just not gonna happen. So now not only do I have extra volume in the back, I got extra volume up front and I'm just not gonna be that person. You can be that person if you want. I'm not gonna stop you from going out with your bum hanging out. But as for me and my house, we will keep our buttocks tucked in and secured and away from things like, I don't know, sticker weeds and stuff. I go outside a lot, you guys know that. Let's get to work. And just to give you guys a real visual of what we're managing here, this is like only a portion of the pink stuff that I pulled out of my stash. It's fine, I have a ton of it. So I just sorted through it and kind of made my decision. So it looks like I have an undetermined length of... Probably the cheapest fabric ever made. It is so plasticky and it's not great and it's not my favorite but we are gonna use it because i think it'll be okay and i think we'll have plenty I, I just based off of like the weight of it i feel like there's plenty there i have this chiffon and this chiffon they are two different colors and neither of them really has enough to do much on so maybe i figure that out later i have tool I've got like some random cuts of tool and then this roll of tool. This is gonna go <laughs> on the other stuff. And then I have this organza and I have quite a bit of it. So it just makes sense to use this for the outer layer. It's darker and not as pastel as I would like it to be. Because remember, we're not being inherently creative with this project. We are just doing it to do something. We're just making it to make something and there's nothing wrong with that. But I by no means came up with the idea for this project. Like it's on the internet already. I will link the original creator down in the bottom so you can go and give her compliments because she's an awesome creator. But this is what I'm settling on. That sounds terrible, I'm not settling. There it is, the pinks. We're going with it. You know, 
how I was just super pumped and psyched about starting this project? Yes, yes I was. I was very, very interested in getting going on it. And then I realized that the fabric itself is so crinkled and wrinkled and full of demons that there would be no way of progressing efficiently until I ironed all of it. So I spent the last two hours ironing the fabric. Normally I don't really mind ironing. It's one of those things that I'm just like, oh yeah, I'll just iron this really quickly. Spending two hours ironing fabric, like bolts of fabric, that's not fun. That's not fun for anyone. That's not fun for me. It's not fun for you guys to watch. So I didn't record a single bit of it, but now we're actually going and I am gonna start with the skirt, question mark? I feel like if I can get the skirt going, it will make me feel more accomplished about the smaller bits to come. So that's the plan. The best part about the skirt is that it's freaking easy. Like if you ever just want to make a skirt that's a big long rectangle, you sew into a tube and use a couple of French seams to just stitch it all together, this is the skirt for you. I'm choosing French seams because we're talking a sheer fabric and I don't want it to have like ugly seams from like a serger or anything that's visible. And honestly, French seams are dope and great for looking good and they maintain structure. Plus when done correctly, they don't fray and this cheap organza is fray city central. So I definitely don't want it coming apart on me. Once the inner layer of satin and the outer layer of organza are all sewn together in their prospective giant rectangle tubes. It's time to scrunch the fabric down a little bit and then put them together to form one giant poofy mega skirt. To do this, I pin them together strategically by finding the four corners of the round and then matching them all up. It sounds weird and maybe a little wrong to say, oh, just go ahead and find four corners of a fabric circle. But that's the only way I can articulate to you what I'm doing in this clip. And when you're in the sewing mind space, I promise you it makes sense. And then I just stitched both layers together and moved on to adding the elastic waistband. I know there's like a legit way to do elastic. Um, I don't use the legit way. I just use the, I'm gonna wrap it around my body and call it good kind of a way. And it's never really failed me in the past. So 10 out of 10 for that method. Installing the elastic into the skirt was super easy, but it could have been made way easier if I had the right tools to do it and not just a safety pin. And here we go. Oh no, it's freaking ugly, but it won't be ugly for long. So keep your hopes up. I decided to use the this is Kachi pattern to form the bodice part of the dress. and. Watching myself do this is painful. I'll explain why later. But This Is Kachi is the channel here on YouTube that I watched and sewed along to to learn how to make a puff sleeve dress. The dress and bodice are easy enough, but the sleeve portion is tricky. So if you're trying to figure it out on your own, if it were me, I'd just follow along to This Is Kachi and I'd buy her patterns too because they are really, really fun and super modern. Now that I've done a full on advertisement for This Is Kachi, but really I swear by her and her patterns are awesome and her sew alongs are awesome. So just like if you're interested in sewing, go ahead and use that resource. But watching myself sew this and at the time I was sewing it, I was like, la la la, everything is fine, following the directions, nothing's going wrong, and I'm always gonna make good decisions. And knowing that in the end, this top doesn't fit and I have to remake it, it's a little painful because I'm like, oh, here I am showing you exactly how to do stuff, even though I don't create tutorials. Oh, I'm so clever because I'm showing you I'm gonna sew around it and then flip it inside out. And then I give you guys all a thumbs up all the while. Me now, editing Alexandria, knows it's not gonna turn out great. <laughs> Last night I got to a point in the project where I just couldn't think anymore and I was like, I need to just step away from this for a minute. So I just like cooked dinner and then watched a movie with Chris and now I'm on a walk to clear my mind. Plus I go for a walk every morning and do you know what morning it is this morning? It's freaking trash pickup day. And so every like 10, 20 yards, there is a super smelly trash bin and I have to walk by it and it's so freaking gross, but you gotta get those steps in, so. And of course the day that I'm editing this was also trash pickup day, which is miserable. So we're back in the sewing studio and I have some things to show you. First of all, this is the top piece that I created yesterday. I will show you why I don't really like it. Here we go. I just don't have a lot of faith in it. I think it's a little bit too small, even though I thought I was cutting it an appropriate size, clearly I did not. So my options are one of two things, and I brought examples. This is a dress that I made like two years ago and it is pretty much what I was thinking I would do for the pink dress where it's got like the flat top in the front but stretchy ruched in the back so that it can fit multiple sizes. I'm pretty sure I have this top pattern somewhere in the house. I'm guessing it's like on this shelf somewhere. That's my best guess. The other option that I have is just a ruched top in general which is something I've been doing a lot lately because it's fun and it's easy and it's practical and it fits multiple sizes and like my body is constantly 
constantly changing. So I could do a top like this, then just add the puffy sleeves on it. Part of me really wants to do this because I have full confidence that I'll just be able to zip that out really quickly. But I do prefer the look of kind of what I've got going here. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm convincing myself into it as we speak. I think I'm gonna cut new pieces out similar to this, but in the size of the blue dress, stitch it together and see if that will work. Because I'd like to finish the dress today and get started on the hat. I have a doctor's appointment later today and we're going on a photo shoot, so I have not a ton of time. Plus, in between going for a walk this morning and now, I decided to clean my whole house, so I'm a little tired. But I'm gonna see how far I can get on it and just do my best, I guess. What's new? This is the pattern that I was using for this originally and it does work, but I think it is just a little bit too small for my body right now. This is a self-drafted pattern that I made when I was making that blue dress that I showed you earlier, like the silky looking one. Wow, I look terrible. Clearly I don't care enough to go change it. Moving on. But this is a self-drafted pattern that I made forever ago. It has yet to fail me, so I'm really just hoping that it works really well. Let me show you the difference between the two really quick and then we'll get going. Straight off the bat, just looking at it, there's a significant difference in size. Bottom pattern is my self-drafted one and the top is the one that I just got off of the internet. I will link that below because I really do like that pattern. It's too small for me right now and it's just not gonna work. So we're moving on to this one right here and where I think I'm gonna do is make the whole thing in this size probably and then just trim it down to like what I actually need if that makes sense because honestly I'm kind of convincing myself into doing this right now. I don't really feel like it but it does need to be done and I have plans for this outfit so like let's get going. I begin by turning on a movie which isn't really a movie it's just a streamable TV show called Belgravia. It's good 9 out of 10. Do recommend. Getting to work cutting those pieces out doing my best to follow my lines and keep everything straight without you know taking forever to do something because <laughs> I just want to get through this. And then I move on to this next part which is something I didn't do the first time around. I'm really making sure that the organza on top and the satin on bottom don't shift while I sew them. So I've got a ton of pins in each panel and then I just baste stitch all the way around the outside perimeter of each pattern. I really don't want these moving while I'm stitching. One of the issues I had with the first bodice was that the organza kind of shrunk in transit in the sense that as I was sewing it, it was shifting around not being super easy to work with. So I'm just trying my best to avoid that happening at all this time and taking double and triple and quadruple measures to keep everything perfect and kosher and in line and not shifting around because I don't want to have to sew this any more times than I already have. We're already on time number two for sewing the exact same kind of bodice deal. I don't want to repeat that mistake, so we're gonna just go the extra mile to make sure my mental sanity is safe. Friendly reminder to always iron your projects as you go, iron your seams, iron any wrinkles out of your fabric, make sure all the demons get right out of that stuff because you will thank yourself. An ironed project will always look better than an unironed project if you're going for like that flat, crisp, pristine look. A pressed project is a blessed project. At this point in sewing the bodice, I kind of had this really good feeling that things were going really well. It was looking the way that it was supposed to. Threw in that top stitching on the neckline. I definitely have a lot more fabric that I'm working with here and that makes me feel a lot better because I want like a full bust coverage, not just a tiny little bit of fabric wrapped around my boobies because sometimes a tiny bit of fabric wrapped around your boobies is fine and sometimes it's just not. And this is one of those cases where it is just not gonna cut it. Moving on to the back ruched part of the bodice by cutting a rectangle that is 1.5 times the length of half of my bust circumference. I did the math last time and I found out that it is true what they say, that 1.5 times the length of whatever you're trying to cover with ruching really is the magic golden ratio. And now that I know that, I will be implementing that process into my ruching practice whenever the technique comes up and I won't have to guess anymore and waste my time and materials on awkward lumpy ruching. Thank you, internet tutorials. And for those of you who don't know, ruching is just a sewing technique where you put elastic thread in the bobbin of your sewing machine and then you do like a really long stitch length. And as you sew rows into your fabric, you kind of stretch it out a little bit and it'll like do this scrunchy, ruchy looking thing. It's great, it's not super fast or incredibly easy, but it does get better and easier and faster the more you do it, so there's that. 
All right, the top is done. This is, in my opinion, as good as it's going to get. I'm totally fine with this. Thinking about it now, I should have interfaced one of those layers, but it is what it is. It's done now. We're just moving forward. So now I've got the skirt and the top. I have the sleeves somewhere, but I haven't really sewn them together. They're just flat patterned right now. I think what I'm gonna do is attach these two and then take a break because I'm tired. So that's where we're headed next. Attaching the bodice to the skirt was not as easy as I had originally anticipated. I used the same four corners method to match everything up, but the skirt is so poofy and voluminous and my hands are so feeble and weak. I'm only partially kidding. So what I ended up doing is I sewed teeny little evenly spaced stitches about a centimeter away from each other to just connect the skirt to the bodice. Yes, that does mean there are tiny little gaps in the connection points all around the waistline, but have you ever heard of doing whatever you want? This is a perfect example of me exercising the do whatever I want method. Feel free to use this method accordingly, but I will warn you, abusing the method can have adverse consequences. In line with the do whatever you want style of sewing slash living your life, you might have noticed that I am in indeed watching a tutorial on my iPad as I make this sewing video. Feels like blasphemy, but I say nay, work smarter, not harder. And like I mentioned earlier, This Is Kachi right here on our very own YouTube already has a step-by-step -step video tutorial for how to make these puff sleeves. And I'll be a corpse in a casket before I stop using the tools, tutorials, and wisdom of the people and resources around me. Besides, if you've been here for a while, you will already know this is not a tutorial channel. Maybe one day I'll get into that line of work, but for now my videos are really more just me taking you along the ride that is my chaotic sewing journey. And I mean, there are like a million ways to sew puff sleeves. Really, you can do it a multitude of different ways. But This Is Kaji has a really simple, kind of tricky, magic, sewing, flippy everything inside out and pull it through a certain way type of way of sewing this sleeve and it makes it so much easier. I also wanted to show you guys these cows that we saw on the photo shoot the other day. They were just out roaming, and then the next morning when I went for my walk, there were horses! I genuinely thought this project was going to take me three days. Two days to do the dress and one day to do the hat. Folks, it's been seven days. Seven days of me trying to motivate myself to get this done. And it's not that I don't want to do it because I do. I really have enjoyed it. And I'm almost done. I just have to hem the bottom of it and the dress is finished and I can move on to the hat. The problem is, and it's a simple problem, I am so tired from growing a baby inside of me. That's it. Everything takes me so much longer than it took before. A simple task that would take me five minutes now takes me 15 minutes in a bathroom break. A quick trip to the grocery store is no longer a quick trip because I have to do mobility exercises before I leave my house, otherwise my body hurts. And it's not easy to sit at the sewing machine and like hunch over because every time I like squish my body, a little bit of puke comes up. Now, is that too much information? Personally, I don't think so. We're all friends here. And if you're not here to be friendly and have a good time, then get out of here. It's kind of miserable, but I'm doing it. I'm attacking this whole baby thing with the same mentality that I attack a cosplay or a sewing project. I'm just gonna do the best that I can with what I got and hope things just turn out. That being said, Let's hem this dress and let's start on that hat because I'm feeling good today. Went for a walk, had some breakfast, took a nap, and now we're here. And I did start hemming the bottom. It was a time-consuming labor of love because there's so much fabric on this skirt. And then for whatever reason, I was like, I'm gonna add some horsehair braid to give it that extra poof, even though it really doesn't need it. So I took extra time to do that for some reason. And then when I looked at the potentially finished version of the dress, I thought to myself, Huh, that's a little plain. A little plain? It looks like a giant puffy cupcake. So what I did is I made a ruched tube of fabric and then just stitched that right onto the top of the neckline. And honestly, I think that completes it. And then it was time to make some celebratory banana bread and film it in slow motion. You guys, this is the best banana bread I think I've ever made. It's delicious. Fresh bread right out of the oven with a little bit of butter on top. Spectacular. I'll even do yellow solid. And here's the recipe. Although I use three bananas instead of two because I like it really banana-y. Finally, moving on to making the hat, which honestly is the part I was looking forward to the most. I've made dresses like this before. They're always a little bit different one from the other, but for the most part, 
it's a puff sleeve selkie dress, like big deal. The hat, on the other hand, I'm stoked about because it has been some time since I made a witchy hat and I'm stoked. Let's go through this really quick. I will 100% be following the Keiko Lin's Instagram tutorial for how to make this hat. Mine might be a little bit different, but for the most part, I am following those steps. Like if there's already a tutorial that exists and all I have to do is watch it a couple of times and follow it, you better believe that's what I'm doing. Secondly, let's look at the color difference between these materials. This pink, is not the same as like this dusty pink purple color I have going on. So I'm gonna try, keyword being try, I'm gonna attempt to overlay the organza on top of this felt stuff to give it the same look and vibe. I don't know if it's going to work. If it doesn't work, then I'll just take it off and I won't use it and we'll just have this color of pink for the hat, which is not a big deal, but I would like to at least attempt to make everything look monochromatic and uniform because I think it would be like nice, you know, and maybe a little bit more of a challenge. Not that this hasn't been challenging enough already because it for sure has been. I literally went downstairs to make lunch and then I just fell asleep on the couch for like three hours. And by fell asleep on the couch for three hours, I mean watched TikTok for four. Judge me now, for in a few seconds, I will be too busy to listen to your thoughts and criticisms. We're doing this. Keiko Lin, who is the creator of the image that I found on Pinterest like a year ago of a puffy, pastel, witchy, gothic, selkie, like pink dress wearing person. She has a really great tutorial for making felt witches have that's on her Instagram. And if you think for even one second that I'm not watching that tutorial and following along as I sew my felt witch's hat, then you have missed the entire mini message of this video, which I will now state plainly for you. If there is a tutorial that is already out here on the internet showing me how to do something and I found it, I've watched it, I've saved it, and I've made plans to make something similar, you better believe that I'm gonna follow the steps earnestly and sing the praises of the OG creator. You gotta give credit where credit is due and Keiko Lin is one of those clever and creative type people who often doesn't get the credit she deserves. So if you're watching this video, go ahead and tap on the extra information or the video caption down below and click the link that I will put there of Keiko Lin's Instagram. Follow her, at the very least check out her stuff because she's awesome. That being said, my hat is a little different in the sense that I'm covering my felt with the dusty rose organza fabric I used when making my puff sleeve dress. I'm basting down the organza really well for the same reason as earlier when I was making the dress bodice. I simply don't want the organza to slip and slide all over the place while I manipulate and sew the materials together. I had no idea if this was even going to work, but as I continued along, I was pleasantly surprised at how well it did work. I worked slow and made sure everything matched up where it was supposed to, and it really started to come together. And then as per usual, I started feeling extra fancy and I decided to do those leafy looking stitches around the brim of the hat. They did not need to be there, but it looks nice. Inserting the cone into the little head hole of the hat, reasonably easy, lots of pins, lots of just double checking and making sure everything's in its right place, where it's supposed to go, what it's supposed to look like, and voila, I mean, can you even be mad at this? I cannot. And then at this point, all I have to do is take out all of those basting threads and then trim up the brim of the hat. Then it's pretty much just decoration time. Well, this worked better than I thought it was going to. Everything looks fairly even and it's fairly flat and I think it's gonna be just fine. The only thing I have left to do is the decorations and I do need to do something about the brim because the organza fabric on the outside of it is going to fray if I do nothing with it. I think I might just make some more of those like ruffly pieces, like those long skinny ruffles and then just glue them or tack them onto this just to kind of hide the edge maybe. I think I'm just gonna like try and disguise it as best as I can and call it Good. And that's exactly what I did. I just got straight to work cutting up this organza into long strips of fabric, which I then sewed into long tubes of fabric, which then got turned inside out or right side in, however you feel about that. And then they all just got running stitches stitched right down the middle of it and I scrunched them all up, turned them into these like octopus squid leg looking things. I can't explain why I think they look like squids. Wait, no, it's jellyfish. They look like little jellyfish arms. Jellyfish legs, right? Well, until they get all squished up, then I kind of think they look more like frosting for some reason. You guys, it's late, I need to go to bed. <laughs> to attach the squiddy frosting ruchy tubes onto the brim of the hat, 
Instead of using pins, I used these clips. I don't know, they just seemed to work better for this application. And then I just hand stitched them all on. This did take a while. That's why I highly recommend watching a movie or listen to a podcast or maybe an audiobook. Feel free to watch my videos while you craft. I mean, you're already here, so what's one more, two more, three more of my videos? Just go ahead, click them on. For the hat brim decorations, Keiko Lin used lace and flowers, so we must use lace and flowers. I have strong feelings about hot glue. I try to use it only when, like, it's super applicable and necessary. You're never gonna find me sewing a whole dress together by using hot glue as the adhesive, but you will find me hot gluing lace and flowers onto a pink, which Witch's hat? Absolutely, that totally works. this up pretty quick here because I want to take a nap. I like this outfit. I liked it when I saw it on Pinterest. I liked it when I saw it on Keiko Lin's Instagram channel. I liked it when I watched her whole tutorial for how to make the hat. I liked it when I, you know, finished it. It's over there. I can, I can see it right there. And then I liked it when I put it on. There is just something so fun about pastel, poofy, girly silhouettes and Halloween. It is a perfect mawage. Mawage. I think the fit of the dress was phenomenal. I'm glad that I had some sense of make it a little bit size inclusive because I made that dress like a month, two months ago and I just am now trying it on. Like we went last night to take pictures. I'm significantly bigger now versus then. Like we're talking, I'm not even kidding you guys, like 20 pounds difference in two months. This is uh, gonna be a big baby. Even just looking at my like stomach in the pictures versus my stomach in the videos and like, don't get weird about that. I'm so glad that I did the ruching in the back because it fits me just as fine now as it did two months ago, which means it'll fit a range of sizes. Just adding that stretchy ruching in the back, genius on my part. I'm not taking full credit it, like as if I was the first person to use elastic in a dress, but I am taking some credit for this particular project because I wasn't originally going to do that. And then I flip flop back and forth between what I should and shouldn't do. And I'm glad where I landed was just like regular front looking front and then a stretchy ruched back. It worked so well. I think the hat looks great. I think it worked really well. Also, it's a little floppy, but I kind of like that vibe. I save a lot of my outfits because I do rewear them quite often, but this is totally one of those that's just gonna probably stay in my closet for years and years and years to come and I'm gonna be that mom that hands out like buckets of candy and soda pops and like little toys and stuff like that dressed as a big pink witch and I don't have a single problem with that it sounds awesome if you are not subscribed yet now is the time to do so. Hit that bell icon so you're notified when I post. It is my goal to get to 10,000 subscribers by the end of the year. We're very close. Let's try and see what happens. Remember to like and comment. And in this house, we craft in pajamas. I kind of like how the whole thing turned out. I kind of like how it looks. Whoop. Looking at myself now, I do feel like one of those oyster babies from Alice in Wonderland. I don't hate it, honestly. I like the whole thing.